Mary Queen of Scots was born a Catholic, but was sent to France due to the Protestant struggle. At 15, she married the heir to the French throne, but by 18, she was a widow. It is 1561. Mary returns to Scotland to meet her Protestant half-brother, James Murray. The two reunite and hug after not seeing each other for a long time. James asks Mary if she's going to stay for a while. Mary responds if he wants her to go away. James denies this and shows her to her chambers. I hope this isn't going to be a Sweet Home Alabama movie. Later, James asks Lord Bothwell, Mary's bodyguard, to leave. However, Bothwell refuses, citing he swore to Mary's mother that he will always protect Mary. James suspects Bothwell that he has ulterior motives, but Bothwell insists he's only doing his job. The current Queen of England is threatened by Mary's return. After all, she's the rightful heir to the throne. Lord Randolph informs Elizabeth of Mary's return. Curious about James's stand, Randolph assures Elizabeth that James is still on their side, dedicated to protecting the Protestant church. However, another member of the council, William Cecil, expresses his fear that James won't be able to stop Mary if she decides to ascend the throne. Still, Randolph trusts James. Elizabeth asks Randolph to send a message to Scotland, detailing that she'll love Mary's family if that love is reciprocated. Cecil suggests that Elizabeth should give birth to an heir to prevent Mary from ascending the throne. Meanwhile, David Rizzio, Mary's secretary, entertains them with a song. Mary asks David to write a letter to Elizabeth, promising them she won't take the throne as long as she names Mary the successor. She also sends her self-portrait to Elizabeth. Elizabeth grows envious of Mary, perceiving her youth, beauty, and potential for heirs as a threat. Meanwhile, Cecil advises Robert Dudley, a council member and Elizabeth's secret boyfriend, to marry and have a child with her. However, Dudley explains that Elizabeth doesn't want to marry because she suspects any man will want to take her throne. Cecil shares that if Mary has a child before Elizabeth, she'll have a stronger claim for the throne. Lennox asks Cecil if he could travel to Scotland to assist Mary due to their shared Catholic faith. Cecil denies his request, believing Lennox would stir up trouble. Queen Mary reassures her people that she'll respect both Catholics and Protestants. John Knox, a powerful council member and leader of Scotland's church, doubts her word. He's worried that Mary's allegiance to the Pope might lead to religious friction. He's also against the concept of being ruled by a woman. Reacting to his defiance, Mary kicks Knox out of the council. After meeting the council, James pleads with Mary to reconsider her decision about Knox because of his major role in the nation. Mary stands firm, not wanting to appear weak. Meanwhile, Elizabeth sends a message to Mary via Randolph, suggesting that Mary marry an English Protestant. Mary replies that her future husband is in God's hands and cheekily suggests Elizabeth should marry too. Knox starts cautioning his churchgoers about Mary. During a council meeting, Cecil predicts that Mary would prefer a Catholic husband. Randolph adds that Mary is backed by a powerful force, so they should arrange her marriage to an English council member who can rein her in. Elizabeth offers her own boyfriend, Dudley, as a potential spouse for Mary. Later that night, Dudley expresses his desire to be with Elizabeth, not Mary. Despite his feelings, Elizabeth urges him to go ahead with the marriage to Mary. The next day, Randolph and Dudley visit Mary's palace. Through Randolph, Elizabeth sends a letter voicing her desire for Mary to marry Dudley and for both queens to meet soon. Mary replies that it's too soon to discuss marriage, and Elizabeth must first declare Mary as her successor. She also suggests Randolph should focus on arranging a meeting between the two queens. On the planned day of their meeting, Mary, her entourage, and Randolph for en route when they're informed that Elizabeth can't make it due to an unexpected visit from French officers. Mary invites Randolph to spend the night with them in Scotland and keep his mistress, Beaton, who's also one of Mary's maids, with him. A celebration takes place in Mary's castle that evening. Away from the crowd, Beaton and Randolph share a passionate moment together. I'm sure Beaton did some beating on Randolph. Beaton informs Mary that Elizabeth wasn't visited by any officers. In truth, Elizabeth had fallen ill with smallpox. Believing Elizabeth's death is near, Mary eagerly writes her a letter, hinting she knows about her affair with Dudley, and agrees to marry him only if she is named Elizabeth's successor. After reading the letter, Elizabeth fears losing both her throne and her boyfriend to Mary. Dudley comforts Elizabeth, promising he won't leave her for Mary. Mary and her maids have a laugh dressing Rizzio as a woman. Rizzio admits he feels more like a woman. Work queen, walk that runway. James then introduces their distant relatives, Lord Lennox and his son, Henry. Henry reveals that Elizabeth allowed him and his father to return to their homeland to serve Mary. During their walk, 
Mary voices her suspicion about their hidden aspirations for her throne, but Henry assures her he only wants to be her husband. That night, Mary and Henry make love, with Rizzio standing guard outside their room. Elizabeth's counsel warns her against the union of two Catholic claimants to the English throne. But Elizabeth insists that Mary is merely marrying an Englishman as she asked. When the council suggests she offer Dudley to Mary, Elizabeth refuses. Conversely, Mary's counsel warns her against marrying Henry, an Englishman who could usurp the Scottish throne. Mary reassures them that Henry has agreed to be her consort and asks them to persuade the nobles to accept him. Henry proposes to Mary atop a mountain, and she accepts. Randolph then visits Mary, conveying Elizabeth's demand for Henry's return to England. Defiant, Mary informs Randolph she will marry Henry regardless of Elizabeth's disapproval. Mary asserts that, unlike the infertile Elizabeth, she will bear an heir to the English throne, shocking everyone. She orders the guards to escort Randolph out. James publicly chastises Mary, warning that her actions could incite a war. He urges her not to marry Henry. Mary remains in Swade and gives James the option to leave, which he does. Meanwhile, Cecil advises Elizabeth to marry Dudley and bear children. She expresses distrust towards men. Cecil proposes instigating a civil war in Scotland, a plan to which Elizabeth reluctantly gives her approval. However, she doesn't want to know any of the details. Cecil and James plot a rebellion against Mary. Despite the tensions, Mary and Henry finally marry. At their wedding feast, a drunken Henry causes a scene and is taken away by Rizzio. Later, Mary finds Henry and Rizzio in bed together. Rizzio apologizes, and Mary encourages him to be cautious. We love a gay ally. When she learns of the rebellion, she leads her army to confront James. Despite Henry's counsel to let James come to them, Mary decides to go after him. Bothwell suggests ambushing James's army, and Mary agrees. In the ensuing battle, James tries to flee, but Mary commands Bothwell to let him go. Most of James' men are killed. That night, Henry resists Mary's attempts at making love but eventually gives in. After announcing her pregnancy, Mary asserts that her child will inherit both English and Scottish thrones. This declaration provokes an argument between Randolph and Maitland, who insists Mary doesn't heed the council's advice. Randolph points out that Henry and his father would become irrelevant once Mary gives birth. Cecil informs Elizabeth about Mary's declaration, but she doesn't respond. Randolph, Maitland, James, and Lennox conspire to crown Henry, king, to weaken Mary. Henry confronts Mary, demanding his promised kingship. She evades the topic and expresses gratitude for their forthcoming child. Knox starts to circulate rumors that Mary cheated on Henry with Rizzio, casting doubt on her unborn child's legitimacy. Pressured into signing a document condemning Mary as an adulteress and sentencing Rizzio to death, Henry eventually yields when Lennox threatens to expose his affair with Rizzio. Later, the councilmen and guards attempt to apprehend Rizzio while he plays cards with Mary. He seeks protection behind Mary, but she's forced to step aside, and Rizzio is brutally murdered. Bothwell, suspecting he's next, goes into hiding. Mary accuses Henry and Maitland of conspiracy. Maitland reassures her they won't harm her. Henry insists he was unaware of the plot to kill Rizzio, but Mary suspects he might be next and suggests they escape. Back at the palace, Maitland and James want Henry to persuade Mary to pardon the conspirators. He refuses, betraying them. Mary and Henry escape to an army base, where Henry is locked up. When Mary receives a bond from James and Maitland as proof of Henry's betrayal, she grants them a pardon. She then announces she will name her son after James. Mary writes to Elizabeth, asking her to be her son's godmother. After giving birth to a son, Mary is named as Elizabeth's successor. Henry is banished, and Mary's counsel advises her to divorce him. Bothwell warns her about Henry's ongoing plots, urging her to divorce him, but she doesn't heed the advice. Later, Maitland manipulates Bothwell to assassinate Henry, promising him kingship in return. Henry's house is set ablaze, leading to his death as he attempts to escape the inferno. Bothwell suggests that Mary relocates for safety. Now residing in one of Bothwell's houses, Mary learns about the council's wishes for her to marry Bothwell. She resists, but under the threat of losing Bothwell's protection, she finally agrees to marry him reluctantly. Knox circulates rumors that Mary had her husband killed to remarry, turning his congregation against her. Maitland and James ask Mary and Bothwell to abdicate the throne to prevent another rebellion. James asks Mary to leave her son behind and promises to serve as the regent until her son is of age. Mary insists on fighting and seeks help from Elizabeth. Elizabeth promises Mary a safe haven in England but warns her against conspiring with her enemies. Mary vows only to conspire if forced. 
After settling in England, Mary is accused of treason. Elizabeth sentences Mary to death, but before doing so, she sends her a letter, indicating that even if she is innocent, Elizabeth has no other choice. She doesn't want to look weak. Before her execution, Mary prays for her son James to rule England and Scotland one day, bringing peace between them. Elizabeth remained unmarried and childless throughout her 45-year reign. In the end, Mary's prayers come true. Her son James ascends the thrones of both England and Scotland, uniting the two kingdoms at last. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.